All right, Coach, season's right around the corner, your 11th season. Just kind of give a brief overview over uh, what you're expecting, what you've saw, seen, and uh, about getting the season off. Um, well, we're banged up, and you don't like to start a season that way. Um, but I think we, we may have them back pretty quickly except for uh, Paige and Haley Harrison. Um, they're both out for the year. Um, Maddie has got a back issue that she claims is fixed. Uh, and then Demi is about a week out from her shoulder. So if we can get those guys back healthy, and uh, that's two post players, so that's a little bit of a, of a worry right now. Um, we have played hard this this uh, preseason and that's one of the first things that we worry about is um, well first is our other attitudes great and we've we've got that and then number two is is do they give the effort and they are so far so if they can sustain that then maybe we can work on being good and maybe by what I don't know I'm a little slow so January will be good I don't know look at it uh what you've got coming back, you've got a lot of experience coming back. Girls, that, uh, two pre juniors, I think, and a sophomore who played a lot, put a lot of minutes in uh, in OBC games. Talk about what kind of leadership they bring. Well, it's unusual for us that we have experience. Um, you know, they're, they're good kids, and they're natural leaders, and so it's not hard for somebody to follow somebody that you believe that's got your best interest in heart, and they're not, there's no agenda. And that's basically Zaire and Chelsea and Maddie in that class. Um, they've been to two championship games. They've won a lot of games, something. Um, are they ready to make the next leap? I, I don't know. I think so. You know, every year, is a, even if you've got as many people back, you still start over um, because everybody's a year older. They've all got stuff going on in their lives. Uh, you've got people that didn't play as much last year that think they're going to play more this year. So every team, even though you may have everybody back, is going to be different. And you have to figure that out uh, as you go along. Now, hopefully we're going to be further along than we were a year ago. Hopefully with seven games to go in the season, we're not going to revamp how we do stuff. Um, you know, I hope we do that pretty early. But, you know, with the injuries and the schedule, there's going to be your two pretty traumatic uh, events right out of the gate uh, because those two things are going to make life tough for us here early. Talk about what that schedule is going to do. What do you want that schedule to do for those players? What I want it to do for the players? <laughs> um, well, I mean, we schedule, we've scheduled the same way for 10 years, and it's just the way we think that we're supposed to do it. And they're going to have to grow up quickly. And, and I'll, I'll get a really good sense probably within the first three weeks of where we are, what we need to work on. And then I'll get a little idea of what these kids think about themselves. You know, um, if we pout and whine and cry about a tough stretch of road games, well, that's probably not good for us in March. Uh, if they're taking it and they're attacking it, and they're excited about every challenge and they're bringing it every day effort-wise, then that's sending us a whole different direction. So, you know, I'll be anxious to watch us uh, over the next month, month and a half. I don't want you to, wouldn't, wouldn't want you to mention players individually, single people out, so I'm going to ask you to mention players and single people out. Okay. Talk about, uh, talk about how practice has gone so far. Who has stood out for you? Who's looking like they could really could, other than the guys we've got coming back? Do you want me to be, what have you done for me lately, or do you want me to, over the whole time. Well, what have you done for me lately? Uh, Chelsea and Zaire, actually Chelsea and Zaire have pretty much done it the whole time. Uh, Maddie's been out, so she hasn't been able to practice for about two weeks. Um, last week, Macy had a really good week. Macy Rippey's a freshman. Um, she can play one, two, kind of wherever. She's a utility player. You can kind of whatever. What do you need me to do? Um, very calming. Um, but she's also having to figure out that the speed of the game and the strength and the size of the athletes is something that she has to figure out. Um, 
So she had a good week last week. She's a freshman. So by definition, that means she's going to have a bad week this week and then a good week next week. Uh, and then the rest of everybody, and I mean everybody, I mean everybody has had a good three days, but then they can't sustain it. And, I, and right now, if, you have to, if I have to tell you what the theme of our team right now is going to be, it's going to be we got to bring it every day. Um, most of them are still young. Even though you know, we have so much back, we're still young. We don't have any seniors. So we're still young, and they still are having to figure out, yes, you have to practice hard every day. Yes, every drill you're supposed to be doing. And that, so that's probably the biggest challenge. Everybody has had a good three or four days. I don't think there's been a player on our team that's had a bad month and a half. Uh, it's just we're looking for that sustained effort more than just Zaire and Chelsea. Uh, Coach, this is a little off topic, but it, with the Bean homecoming week, um, the induction of Heather and Jasmine into the Hall of Fame, just kind of speak to uh, their importance in your program and, and how much it means to you that they're getting that opportunity. Um, is this going to be a mini series? Sure. Um, you know, I'll just tell you oh, how much do they mean to me or the program or all of it. Of well, I'm probably going to cry on Saturday. And I'll try not to tear up now as I talk about them. Um, th those two, I mean, good gosh. You know, I said it. I told our fans this, and I hate to tell you, I told you so. But after about the first or second year, I said, y'all better come watch this because... It's something else, and they're not going to be here forever. And, you know, I said that thinking, well, they're going to be here a while. No, you blink, and they're five years out. And it still feels like yesterday they were playing. Um, you're talking about two kids that I took them aside when they were freshmen and said, if you'll work and do what I'm asking you to do, you know, I think you can be an All-American, which at the time was a pretty crazy comment. Well, I think they both ended up being All-Americans. and. WNBA and playing overseas and um, broke, I mean, I, how many records have they broken? Um, you know, just, I, I don't know, you know, for me, and, I, and I'm not, for me, those two, we probably should have retired their jerseys while they were still here. <laughs> um, just because it's just, I, I don't think you'll ever get another duo like those two. Um, and what was so good about them is, is that not once during their career was there ever jealousy. Not once. And you're talking about unusual in today's day and age. One of them scored 44, the other didn't care. Then three games later, the other one scored 44. Well, then the other one did it. Then the other one did it. And it was just like, you would think, but mm -mm. every day at practice, they're pushing each other. Um, and they thanked their whole career to Megan White, who was the other senior that was in that, in that group. Um, so I, I don't know if I answered your question. I probably didn't. You probably asked me a lot of other stuff. But um, I, I will enjoy. You know, it just says a lot when my son asks me unprompted if he can come to the ceremony. So what do those kids mean? that my 17-year-old son can find out they're being inducted, know when it is, and ask me if he can be there. So I don't know if I can give you a better ringing endorsement than that. Uh, you guys open the season this weekend, and you guys have scheduled to host Louisville and stuff like that. In the past, you've talked about how that's a reward for your fans. How important is it to uh, give back to your fans, embrace them, and be part of the community? Well, you know, we've always tried to get the Louisville's, Purdue's, the Vanderbilt's, the Alabama's to come here and play. Um, you know, we think we've got, over the years, we've had just a phenomenal fan base. And everybody in our league talks about it. You know, they'll be talking at a, at a meeting and they'll say, well, here's what we do. Well, Martin, don't worry about Martin because they're going to have a big crowd anyway. Um, and it's almost taken for granted but I hope that we don't. I hope, um, you know, we, we try to be, you know, we send the kids up in the stands. We've been doing that for 10 years because I want those kids to interact with the people that are coming to watch them because the people, you know, we have, we have fans that, you know, I say this, 
They don't care whether we win or lose. They really don't. They do. But as long as you play the right way and you act the right way, they'll be there for you, win or lose. And, and that's unusual in, in this day and age. And so for me to say Louisville's a reward, well, it's kind of a reward to our fans that you know, we travel to Louisville, we play Louisville, we travel to Mississippi State, we play Mississippi State. Well, guys, we'll bring them here for you so you guys can come out and see them. And we've always had our fans show up, and uh, we're hoping for another really, really big home crowd year. Uh, you never know with everything that's going on, but uh, excited to, to let the fans have some of these bigger games.